Hey everybody, it's time for the uh, inductee, inductees for the 2024 Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. This is John Bowden, Rock History Music and a Sunday night, which we usually don't come on, but here we go. <laughs> It's uh, it was announced a, a little while ago that they would be uh, basically letting us know about the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame during American Idol, and I went, what? Eh? American Idol? It's the last place I'd expect to hear about the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. But anyway, Peter Frampton, I was just on the bed, just lying down, hanging out, and I was uh, I saw Peter Frampton do the announcement and say, "Hey, I'm so pleased to." Uh, be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, into these fine class of, uh, and went, what, what, wait a second, what? Hold on, I think if I, if I, let me see if I've got it. Uh, this is from Peter Frampton. This is something I never expected. I am overwhelmed that I will be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, spe- excuse me, especially alongside so many incredible artists who have gone before me. I can't thank everyone enough for voting for me. You are the best. Somebody pinch me, please. We tried to get, I mean, I have been trying to get Peter Frampton on this channel for a lot of years. But anyway, here's uh, here's the inductees. There you go. Performer category, Mary J. Blige. We've got Cher, God knows, but I, she had a lot of hits. Uh, Dave Matthews Band, congratulations to them. Foreigner, Lou Graham says he would uh, show up. We've got Peter Frampton, as mentioned. Congratulations, Peter Frampton. Cool in the gang. So many hits. Yes, Ozzy. Ozzy is in there. A Tribe Called Quest from Queens. We've got Musical Excellent Award with Jimmy Buffett. Congratulations. MC5 was just talking to Blue Easter Cult about MC5 because they recorded some stuff. Dior Warwick, well deserved. Norman Whitfield uh, wrote so many hits for so many people. Alexis Corner, who is, uh, of course, the king of British blues, uh, John Mayle, uh, Big Mama Th- Thornton, and uh, the Amit Ortigan Award, Susan DePass, who is an executive, which is usually the case for when they sh- when they when they come up. Please tell me you heard me because I had to un unmute my microphone. Uh, hey, someone said Forner, yay! Isn't that cool? Good for Forner. Everyone's happy. I don't. I have heard that Mick Jones is not in a condition, and Mick hasn't been touring with Forner for a while that Mick might not be in the condition to perform with them because of, 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 of his, uh, of of his condition. His mind is not where it used to be. I heard that. So I don't know if that's true, but someone was just telling me today, will Lou Graham perform? Lou Graham will, but Mick Jones, did I say Mick Jones? I hope I was talking about Mick Jones. Lou Graham will say, it said he will be there and he, he was hoping they would do jukebox hero. I want to know what love is. And I forget the last song he mentioned, but he had told us that he would perform. He has since, since he's talked to us, said that he would perform with uh, with Foreigner on there. It's kind of a nice thing. Everyone's, uh, it's, it just said, Ozzy Osbourne reacts here. This is from Ultimate Classic Rock. As you guys know, I love Ultimate Classic Rock. Uh, basically, of all the rock sites, and they've used a lot of our stuff. So just let me, this is, this is thinking here. Okay, Ozzy, let's see what Ozzy said. It just came. Love Ultimate Classic Rock. Ozzy Osbourne has shared his excitement of being elected into the Rock and Roll of Fame for a second time. Of course, Black Sabbath. Hold on. In conversation with Billboard, he said, with every new music venture, there's always a certain amount of surprises that comes when you see fans embrace it because no one wants to make a record and have it flop. Ozzy continued reflecting upon his solo career. I feel I was invited into the party in 1980. Uh, but yeah, what about the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? But he changed, Ozzy changed his tune regarding the Hall. Ozzy wasn't always positive regarding the Hall. When Black Sabbath was nominated for uh, enshrinement in 1999, the singer infamously wrote an open letter slamming the institution saying, just <laughs> take our name off the list. Uh, save the ink. Forget about us. The nomination is meaningless. Wow. It's not voted on by fans. It's voted on by, I suppose, elite in the industry and the media who've never bought an album or concert ticket in their lives. Now, he says, um, most recently, uh, Osborne admitted that he was nervously hoping to be inducted in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I've been, it's been driving me mad, Ozzy says. This is in March. Uh, it's an honor 
and I'm nominated, that I'm nominated, but I'm not expecting to get in. Well, he got in. There's Mariah Carey, there's Cher, Lenny Kravitz. I'm up against people. If I get in, I get in. If I don't, I don't. There you go. Thank you, Ultimate Classic Rock. That just came up. Okay. Mick Jones has come forward. Thanks to Ultimate Classic Rock. Uh, please always check out, if you want great news, up-to-date news, and every day I'm on my computer and I, Ultimate Classic Rock comes up and I'm going, ah, yeah. So Mick Jones, good. I'm, I'm glad that he's, uh, uh, he seems... Hold on. Okay. Hold on. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me. While I'm doing this, I'm just going to give you a, uh, this, these are the, the class of 2024. Ah, there was Frampton there. You see that? Ozzy Osbourne, there he is. It's a nice, I mean, you know, a Tribe Called Quest, Hip Hop from Queens, Musical Excellent Award, Jimmy Buffett, MC5. I was talking to Buck Dharma the other day of uh, Blue Easter called about MC5. Norma Whitfield, I mean, talk about a list of songs. Hey, the, the one of the most influential blues artists of all time in uh, uh, as far as, uh, hold on, let me just take this out here. As far as... Um, uh, British blues, uh, Alexis Cormer, Corner. I don't wasn't really. I have to admit, I wasn't really that familiar with him. There's a lot of these, uh, like uh, Big Mama Thornton, of course. There, there. You, if you don't know the name, uh, and she's been dead for quite a long time. If you don't know the name, you'll know uh, Ball and Chain, which was recorded by uh, uh, Janis Joplin. So it's a pretty good list. I mean. I mean, I don't listen to Cher, and I've never considered Cher a musician. She's a performer. She's an entertainer. Uh, but what the heck? You know, Foreigner got in. I'm so happy about Foreigner. Having talked to Lou Graham not that long ago about, about the thing, he says it was a personal vendetta. By the way, the Mick Jones said Mick Jones said a very similar thing about the fact that there seemed to be a personal vendetta against Foreigner ever getting into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. It's just thinking again. Hold on a second. Yeah. Uh, but foreigner got in, huh? You know, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm thoroughly, thoroughly happy about this. This, this makes me very happy. I'm just going to keep rolling this and get to some of your comments. Boston, Kansas UFO. I don't know if UFO will ever get in. I don't know about that. Uh, they are certainly groundbreaking in metal in very hard rock metal. FJ. Thank you. James Cook should just change the name to the music hall of fame. You know, James you're not the first to say that. A lot of people have said that. That definitely, um, uh, yeah, foreigners. I want to know what love is. It's disqualifying, according to Scott Brower. <laughs> yeah, I know. Dionne Warwick certainly belongs to be in, but Dionne Warwick belongs to be into the, uh, to the like the music hall of fame. It's certainly not a rock and roll hall. John Mayle, John Mayle's Blues Breakers, Big Mama Thornton, uh, R and B, and and blues. Um, and I go against people see like, uh, um, well, MC five is one of those bands. And I was, and, and, uh, like I said, I was talking to Buck Dharma on Friday. I think it was about, uh, kick out the jams, which blue oyster cult recorded. And I mean, unless you've been living under a rock and there's no way, if you don't know MC five, look up that song to go, Oh, I do know MC five. And then you'll, Look them up on, on Spotify and you'll notice a few songs. You'll go, oh, wait a minute. Okay. Big Mama Thornton's same, uh, very, very similar. Um, let me see, get to your comments. Don J. Meister, Scott uh, Brower, keep your comments to yourself, pal. No one gives a damn what you think. What, what did you say? Oh, you know, it's not a, Scott, come on. Yeah, you, you, you can't say, you can say foreigner sucks to me, but to say a blanket statement, I mean, come on, this is something, this is something like kids used to say in high school. You know, when you like somebody and you go, oh, that's up, that's up, sucks. And whenever we quote you, that's how we quote you with this voice. Because to say stuff like that, it's so childish. Come on, it's not a time. Foreigner 
what well, deserves their stripes d- deserves where they're at and if you don't like foreigner then why are you even here just forget it you come here just to i mean and i'll if you keep commenting on stupid crap i'll block you um uh fj foreigners first two albums were great you know double vision outsold the debut album there's there's something to remember and you know that sophomore jinx and lou graham told us that when they were recording that first album they were very very careful but they were more careful going into double vision which is their biggest uh after number four which is their biggest album um michelle forrest love foreigner Melody R. Hey, Melody. Uh, yeah, good for Lou. Good for Mick Jones. Good for all of them. And maybe they'll, you know, Lou Graham has told us and told a lot of people the, the song that ruined, the song that ruined Foreigner was I Want to Know What Love Is. But you can't say no to a song like that where Lou wanted a bigger piece of the writing. He just, he thought he deserved a bigger piece and it didn't happen. Patricia. Uh, Foreigner's great, great songs. Melody R, yes, Michael First, Love Foreigner. Back, um, uh, hold on, Savoy Brown, oh yeah. Uh, oh, will uh, Clapton induct Mail? Well, yeah, that's one of the places where he got his start, right? Yeah, I would think so. But they, you know, you have to understand, then they've got to, they've got to pony up the money because I don't think Clapton's going to, buy his own tickets to get Eric Clapton there. Hey man, it's freaking Eric Clapton. You know, whether you like Clapton or not. So let me just, uh, um, let me just show you again. Uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't show this. This is uh, the nominees. These are the inductees, Mary J. Blige. Yeah, I know. Cher, more of a performer. I mean, Dave Matthews band, great band. They well deserve foreigner. There they are. There's our boys. Yeah, Peter Frampton. Man, I love Frampton. Cool in the Gang, so many hits. Uh, Ozzy, second time. Black Sabbath and that Tribe Called Quest. A little Queen's Hip Hop. Jimmy Buffett, good, good musical, excellent award, good for them. MC5, yeah. Good old MC5. Kick out the jams. Neon Warwick, Norman Whitfield. Oh my God, so many hits. Ain't Too Proud to Beg. I Know I'm Losing You. I Heard It Through the Grapevine. Cloud Nine. I can't get next to you. War. Ball of confusion. Just my imagination. And then okay, Susan DePass. There you go. Not a bad, not a bad. Li- See, that's the thing with people who uh, uh, like the rock stuff and believe the rock stuff belongs in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. There's that thing. Then you have to put up with Mary J. Blige if you're not a fan. Mary J. Blige is a huge artist. Heavily influential artist. I say way more influential than than Cher ever could be. But Cher was just one of those, I mean, culturally with Sonny and Cher, they were a big deal. I mean, they were on TV all the time. I just never liked Cher's vocals. But it doesn't mean just because I don't like them. I can understand the cultural effect that that Cher had in music. Someone, my neighbor, he's right across the street, just told me he saw Cher in concert. He says, man, was she ever lip syncing? Well, not the first one to do that. But I'll keep rolling the list forward so everyone can see it and let's see let me see what i've got here I'm, i probably got a better view let's let me see what i've got i'll tell you hold on bear with me so in the performance category we do have mary j blige and if they're going to let r b music come in, you've got to have Mary J. If you're going to do that, if you're going to have that rule that you let that ilk of artist in, Mary J. Blige certainly, certainly belongs to be in there. If you're going to do that. Now, I know a lot of people are balking that trend, but that trend's been going for a while. So I would say Mary J. Blige deserves to be there. Of course, Cher, again, culturally, she's had a lot of hits and a lot of lives. You know, Gypsies, Tramps and Thieves, I remember... I got you, babe. Remember the Sonny and Cher thing? And she kept coming back. Do you believe in... I hate that song. I hate that song so much. Dave Matthews Band. Yeah. Uh, Foreigner. Well, well well-deserved. P. 
Peter Frampton, man, one of the greatest live albums of all time. For a while, it was the biggest live album of all time. But then others came in, and but still one of the greatest live albums of all time. Cool and the Gang. Uh, James, T James J.T. Taylor, who was their lead singer, he left for quite a long time. As far as I know, he's still not with them, and he's doing solo stuff. I hope he comes back. I think he will to perform with them. Uh, Ozzy Osbourne, second time, baby. Uh, Tribe Called Quest. Again... You've, you've gotten hip hop in there. You, they've set precedent for quite a long time. So you kind of have to have them in there. I know I don't agree with the, we're dealing with the music hall of fame here, not a rock and roll hall of fame, but anyway, musical excellence, uh, Jimmy Buffett, may he rest in peace. Talk about a guy who knew branding more than anybody else on the freaking universe. Who knew branding? Kiss, Kiss knew branding. There was a few bands that just knew how to brand themselves and build an empire around a vibe, a type of music. Jimmy Buffett certainly did that. MC5 influenced freaking everybody. Uh, Dionne Warwick was Burt Backrack songs, man. Uh, you know, when I was a rocker, I was always a Dionne Warwick fan. You know, even when I didn't like that type of music, that ilk of music, I was always a Dionne Warwick fan. Uh, Norman uh, Whitfield. I, I had a list here of the songs he either produced or wrote. Uh, Ain't Too Proud to Beg, I Know I'm Losing You, Heard It Through the Grapevine, Cloud Nine, I Can't Get Next to You, War, Ball of Confusion. Look at just my imagination. Like, Papa was a Rolling Stone. What the hell? But he's dead. You know, long dead. Musical Influence Award, uh, Alexis Corner, who was the father of British blues. John Mayle, speaking of the blues. Uh, Big Mama Thornton. I remember I, I uh, uh, with that sort of, but Big Mama, I, like I was saying a while ago, the big it was it was uh, Janis Joplin, when someone told me the connection. Oh, who's Big Mama Thornton? You know, Ball and Chain, um, and the Emmett Erdogan Award. Emmett Erdogan was one of the guys who started Atlantic Records. It's one of the reasons that Led Zeppelin got back together for their for their tour. Suzanne DePass, who was a record executive. That award always goes to people who, like uh, Ahmet Erdogan, uh, made a difference in music, in the industry. Let me get to some of your comments. Nice to have so many, so many people on here. Man, it's like, you know, it's Sunday night. And I just lost one of my lights up here, you know, and my hair is crazy. My hair is always like this. I naturally have my hair like this. So. Okay. Billy C. Always has been a joke, always will be. Well, you know, you're not alone in thinking that. Dave Matthews Band, Henry F. Uh, yes, yes, Dave Matthews Band deserves to be in there. I mean, they're such a progressive band that, that again, it's heavily influential. Uh, Debbie says Hall of Fame is very political. It really is. You're very, you're very right. Uh, Rick Wakeman. I doubt it's the real Rick Wakeman, but glad to see they are recognized Jimmy Buffett. He's not only influential in music and culture. He's, oh, he, yeah, he's, he's every, you, you can't. Jimmy Buffett created an amazing lifestyle, thought form, industry. He didn't buy, he didn't die poor, but he did what Kiss did. Uh, there's a guy I used to work with named Steve Jones. He, he, uh, he wrote a book called Brand Like a Rockstar. And of course, there was a lot written about Jimmy Buffett and Kiss. Dave J. Meister, so glad Mariah got denied. <laughs> She's so arrogant. Her cover of rock songs are unlistenable. Well, yeah, her, her cover of rock songs are really bad. Um, Cher is whiny like Celine. Oh, uh, no easy way. The thing about Celine Dion, I've always found, and I've I've been in, in, in light rock radio as much as I've been in rock. When I used to syndicate radio shows, I was, I was doing rock stuff. And of course, this is all rock, and I interview rock stars all the time. That's what rock history music is all about. The thing about, and I think you guys can relate to this. You might love Celine Dion, right? And Celine Dion's not, not on here at all. But I, I, let me just get this out. Celine Dion is like the, 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 the show-off-y person that we all went to school with. Totally talented. Very talented. Celine Dion deserves all the praise she gets musically. She's an amazing singer. Not my lane of music. You know, my heart will go on if I hear that one more time. You know, I understand. And I understand the praise she gets. I get it. But there's just something show-offy about her. Just kind of like, 
like, what is that? I mean, you want to be, you want to be confident, but there was just something. We all went to school with someone like that. And Mariah is a little like that. I don't think, I don't, I don't really feel Whitney was like that. I'm not saying she wasn't. Um, uh, Christina Aguilera had an air of that, but maybe I'm full of crap and that's just confidence overblown maybe because you got to be on stage. Uh, Billy C. Always been a joke. Uh, James Cook. Molly Hatchett. I don't think Molly Hatchett will ever get in. Um, Little Feet. Little Feet should get in. But again, James, you're not wrong. You love Molly Hatchett. You feel your Molly Hatchett should get in. We've done a lot of things on Molly Hatchett and there are many, many dead singers. Um, MJ. When you think rock and roll, you got to think of Dionne Warwick. See, that's the thing. But they've set precedent on this already. So that's the thing. Every year someone's going to complain. I don't blame you for complaining. Don't, hey, that, 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 it's okay. But, but they, again, they, they told us many years ago that they're going to let blues in. Well, blues, bluesy in country and early country were the foundations. Uh, early black music was the foundation of rock and roll. Whether people want to admit that or not, it just really, really is. I remember I was talking to Stuart Copeland of the police a little while ago. And he says, do you have like, can I give you, can I give you the diatribe? Can I give it to you? I said, yeah, 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 sure. I knew where he was going about the history of rock and or, well, in the beginning, rock and roll, which was the more swingy stuff, the, 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 the foundational stuff. But it goes back to rockability, rockability and blues. And so that's what the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame was trying to do. Not guessing here. This is they're looking at the influence. Now, it, 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 why aren't the why isn't Steve Luger in? You know, why isn't David Page in? If that's the case, right? David Page with Boss Gags and Toto and Michael Jackson and all this other stuff. So, yeah, don't get me started. Oh, uh, South Jersey Matt says Toto, Patricia uh, Maganam, Frampton deserves his due. What a wonderful concert at a uh, oh, Wolf Trap. Yeah, Virginia. I've uh, never seen him. Never seen Frampton. And again, I just emailed Frampton at his email address. I had the right one. About a month ago. No, no. God, two weeks ago. I said, I said, Peter, you know, I've, I've reached out many times. I'm just circling back. Just circling back. We would love to, you know, come on on. We've got 130,000 subscribers. You know, we don't have the biggest channel, but we certainly are far from the small. We're a pretty good channel. We do well. We interview some really heavy hitters. I didn't say all this. But I said we have 130,000 subscribers. Peter Frampton, come on. Come on, Zoom and talk to us. Nothing. Now, Peter Frampton's busy. And I'm not even saying Peter Frampton's the guy who looked at my email or even anyone looked at the email. We just like to have, you know. Uh, yes, Jimi Hendrix is in. Melody. Uh, David J. Meister. Uh, oh, you're talking to yourself. Sonia. Hey, Sonia. The hot dogs go on. <laughs> Next year, Sticks. Rick, I hope so. There's no way Sticks doesn't deserve to be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I have uh, I have a uh, point in a return right there. Sticks. Well, beside Elton John's Captain Fantastic and the Brown Deer Cowboy. Boston should be in there. Excuse me. I mean... Monolith, I can't, Monolith is there. There's some Toto autograph stuff, Elton John's box set. But there's a lot of people who deserve, Elton John's band. Excuse me, Elton John's band, Nigel Olsen. If Neil Giraldo is in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame because of Pat Benatar, I hate to go on Neil, I have nothing against Neil Giraldo, but if if they're going to set the bar at a Neil Giraldo, and, and Neil's a great guitarist, great mu uh, musical director for her, but his name was not on the album. It was always Pat Benatar. And if you're going to go with Neil Giraldo, then you're breaking the rules by not letting Nigel, Nigel Olsen in, or even Liberty DeVito, speaking of drummers for Billy Joel, uh, Davy Johnstone of Elton John's band, uh, D. Murray, even Caleb Quay. Uh, Caleb deserves to be there. Ray Cooper. There's so many... Okay, there's so many things in Rock and Roll Fame. Okay, if you're going to go, okay, that's a new rule. Okay, we're letting R&B in. So that's why I let Mary G. Mary G. Blige deserves to be there. If you're going to do that. So I know a lot of people are complaining, well, that's not rock and roll. I understand that, but we're, 
with the Rock and Roll of Fame, we're way past that. Does it mean you can't bitch about it? Nah, you can bitch about it. But I'm just saying, it's kind of like combing your hair in the wind. No, it's not. It's not like combing your hair in the wind. You're allowed to be mad even after all these years. I mean, they said rock and rollers are a certain type of person. Let me look. look let me just show you the, the nominees. Rock and rollers are a certain type of, you know, you, I know you want rock and roll. You want it to be rock and roll. Cher's not rock and roll. Dave Matthews, not really rock, but they're a certain brand of, um, I love Dave Matthews. Foreigner, yes. Frampton, you're the man. Cool and the Gang, no, but heavily influential. And Cool and the Gang were big long before we knew who they were. A Tribe Called Quest, of course, Hip Hop, Musical Excellence Award, Jimmy Buffett, thank you. MC5. Oh, yeah. Kick out the jams. Dion Warwick, I, I agree with some of you. Norman Whitfield. Norman Whitfield's great. John Mayle and the Blues Breakers. John Mayle. Big Mama Thornton. And Suzanne DePass. There you go. A lot of... Hey, man. I, I hear you. A lot of folks going, what the heck? How about the Dan Bell? How about the village people? Uh, yeah, Elizabeth, uh, Bernie Toppin got inducted. He certainly did. No easy way. John Mayle is 90. Oh, well, look at Norman Whitfield's dead. You know, um, Big Mama Thornton's dead. Uh, Alex, uh, Alexis Corner's dead, as far as I know. Hold on. Let me look. Let me look him up. Why not while we're on live? Let me look it up. Yeah, he died in 84, Alexis Corner. Wow. That's crazy. Let me look some other people up. <laughs> Hold on. Bear with me, guys. We're all on live. Anything can happen. What the heck? Oh my God. You know what? The, the problem with my, my computer here is it's incre incredibly slow when I'm streaming and I'm streaming as at high, as high of, um, hold on. Why am I on Starship? Jesus. Hold on. Just looking up some people here. Why not? While we're on live. Let's get some comments. I'll read some comments while I put the list up. Yes, let me read some comments. These are the inductees, by the way. Uh, F.J. Tom Schultz not only wrote and played every instrument except drums in his basement. He invented the Rockman. Yeah, I think Tom Schultz, I think Boston should be in. Douglas Struthers. Uh, odd that it took until 2024 for Norman Whitfield to be inducted. I agree. It's crazy. Um, Sonia, the president of Pat and Neil was to preserve the marital bliss. I get the, pre uh, oh yeah, Pat, Benatar, Neil Giraldo. I don't understand that. I, I, it doesn't make any sense. Again, you can't let Neil Giraldo in without letting the, El the Elton John ban in or the uh, uh, you, uh, the 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 Billy Joel ban, or the uh, you know so many other people, John Mellencamp's band, all these solo artists. It's a crime. You can't do that. Okay. Again, I keep saying set precedent. If you're going to do that, how many other bands, uh, backup singers, need to go in? It's crazy. Don't get me started. Uh, do you, uh, do you think, oh, Douglas Struthers says, do you think that Nigel D Davey and Ray will ever be inducted? Well, D's dead. D died quite a long time ago. <coughs> I think so. I hope so. Oh yeah. Uh, Michael, thank you. Grant Funk should be in the rock and roll of fame. It makes no sense. No sense. When you look at after the Beatles, who were like some of the biggest bands 
in the early 70s because the Beatles lasted till then. Uh, Creedence Clearwater Revival, of course, we don't have to worry about that. But Grand Funk Railroad, one of the great, biggest bands in the world, sold out Shea Stadium without having one big hit. They were an albums band. They showed up, they sold out Shea Stadium be- faster than the Beatles. Technology was different then, and everything was a little different. But it's still nice bragging rights to say that we sh- sold out Shea Stadium uh, faster than the Beatles. It's crazy. Uh, no easy way. Marshall Tucker Band is not in. They are not. Patricia, do musicians have to campaign to get in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? I don't think so. Um, I don't think so. I think basically there's always a heavy weight that goes with the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I've got to keep playing this this banner. So while I'm talking, you can see. These are the people who are getting in. The Outlaws, I don't know if they'll get in. I don't know if the Outlaws will get in. The Music Sanctuary, Grand Funk should have been there long ago. Debbie says, yes, Grand Funk. Uh, Sin City Jam saw a Humble Pie open up for a Grand Funk Railroad back in the early days. Well, you know, Frampton was in Humble Pie too. Uh, Debbie, uh, Carol, Grand Funk was there. Shea Stadium, Humble Pie. Oh, wow. Joe Jackson should be in. Joe Jackson was a heavily influential. Joe Jackson was, is, is not was, is one of those performers who has changed, remember Night and Day? Changed, I mean, came in at at the post-punk thing and was amazing at just having so many different genres of music. I remember I I lived on Denman. If anybody knows um, Vancouver, I lived on, oh God, what was it called? I lived off Denman. And I was going, if you're, if you know Denman, if you know Vancouver at all, Denman runs right into, if you keep going, you go one way, you go to Stanley Park, you go the other way, you go to English Bay, if you know Vancouver. And I was going towards English Bay and I saw this crowd of people surrounding this guy. And I went, who is this guy? I went, wow, that guy looks like a tall Joe Jackson. And I didn't realize Joe Jackson was tall. And I just thought Joe Jackson was, I mean, it's strange when you, you see, I didn't meet him. You see someone. And then I called my friend up who worked for AM Records at the time because he was on AM at the time. And I called Nancy. Nancy Saskia was her name. I says, Nancy, is, is, uh, is Joe Jackson tall? She says, yeah, he's a tall guy. Because she worked for AM. I'm going, were you there? And I forget what she told me, but yeah, anyway, that's my Joe Jackson story. <laughs> but I, I would be okay with that. I don't know if he'll ever get in though. Um, uh, Robert LaPointe, what's your position on the three dog night? Oh God. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Chuck Negron was, uh, on our channel a little while ago. Great interview. And three dog night had many hits. Three dog night didn't write any of their hits, but, but still an interpretation. I mean, Linda Ronstadt didn't write her hits. You know, Elvis didn't write, even though sometimes he put his name on things, but and that's common practice in the music industry now. People will say, especially the young, some of the young Disney-esque singers, if you want me to record your song, I have to have a co-write. I have to have a piece of it, right? And it doesn't mean they wrote anything. So Elvis kind of, I think, did that. Um, Three Dog Night, definitely. Yeah. Joy to the World one of the, it was the biggest song that year when it was released. A lot of great tunes. So, yeah. And now there's only... Two dog nights. There's only two uh, uh, available. Uh, Doomsday Gray. How about Iron Maiden? I don't know. Iron Maiden in? I'm not a big metal guy. I don't really follow metal that much. And there's other guys on. We're we're basically rock. And we're basically uh, pop and rock on rock history music. That's what we do. Um, Michael R. Big Voice in Rock. Brad Delp. Yes. Boston. Burton Cummings. The Guess Who. And Solo are the rest are just pretenders well that yeah that, that but that <laughs> no no you kind of forgot steve perry you kind of forgot uh when i was talking um who was i talking to a little while ago they were telling me that uh um they were saying that steve perry is it you know in his prime i saw the escape tour with journey and steve perry and I just saw Journey because I got some tickets from the Toto guys. He gave me uh, six tickets, really good tickets, like really good tickets. 
So we all went, we went backstage, I hung out and uh, Journey still sounds amazing. You know, um, okay, Steve Perry's not there anymore, but Arnel Pineda's doing a good job. A uh, Cleo Geo Triumph, I think when, you know, when Rick Emmett told me a few months ago that he had cancer, he said, I'm okay, but I'm just letting you know. I said, can I say it publicly? He said, no, no, no. He says, I'm, I'm, you can, you go with it. Uh, when he said that, you look at him going, oh, Rick, Rick, I, I've interviewed Rick more than anybody else in, in rock and roll. Like maybe, I don't know, 10 times maybe. When I interview Rick Emmett, we talk for, for two and a half, three hours every time. And um, it made me think, I'm going, well, I hope they get into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. You know, I really hope. I've talked to all three guys from Triumph a, a few times. Um, okay, Sin City, Badfinger, great group. Such a tragic outcome. I mean, when you got two guys, the two main singers, um, who uh, end their lives, it's pretty hard. Brian Berkshire, UFO. I think UFO should get in because he was such a trend-setting, very, very hard rock metal band. Um, uh, Cleo Geo, April Wine. I don't think they'll ever get in. I hope they're good. They're my favorite Canadian band. I'm doing a big special. Shannon is downstairs at this very moment. My wife editing their original drummer, Richie Henman. Like right now. Douglas Struthers, Super Tramp. As two certified diamond albums. Well, Super Tramp deserves to be in. Um, by the way, the lawsuit against Roger Hodgson... I just got this from a big Super Tramp guy. The 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 uh, Bob Siebenberg, uh, John Helliwell, and uh, uh, Doogie Thompson had this lawsuit against Rick Davies, which has been settled. The, the one of the lead singers, and then they just went to court with Roger Hodgson, and they lost their their they lost their suit. The suit was basically. Uh, they thought it was in perpetuity, which meant, which means forever that they would share in the proceeds of the hits of the songs. But the judge says there's no proof that it was supposed to last forever. So they lost that. Super Tramp ain't never getting back together. That's not going to happen now. As they say down south, that dog won't hunt. It's too bad though. I've talked to John Helliwell. We've had Roger Hudson on the channel. We've had uh, Bob Siebenberg on the channel. Um, who else? <laughs> I think that's it. Uh, Brian Wallace, Barry White. Is Barry in? You know, Heather Picaro, who is Steve Picaro's daughter. Steve is the second keyboardist in Toto. Was. He's not with him anymore. Uh, Co-wrote um, uh, Human Nature for Michael Jackson. Heather told me that her best friend used to be Barry White's uh um, Barry White's daughter. So I said, like, did you ever, did you ever come in and Barry, you know, cause he had big, deep voice. I said, you ever see him stirring the, stirring the tomato sauce and go, Hey baby, what's going on? <laughs> she laughed. She says, no, but he's really nice. Of course, Barry White was really nice, but Barry's long dead. Uh, Debbie Carroll, uh, Michael, definitely. Uh, oh, uh, Brian says love Slade. Someone else had mentioned Slade. Uh, Ronnie Montrose is dead, but someone said Montrose. Uh, Sammy Hager is obviously still alive. David J. Meister, Iron Maiden deserves to be in. Thank you, David. Michael R., uh, does P. Diddy or Jay-Z have any chance of Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? I don't even know if they're in. Are they in? I don't I mean. Paul Rogers should be in multiple times. Paul Rogers is by far one of the greatest singers in rock history. And, and yeah, uh, uh, Again, whenever I say that, it's like the blanket statement somebody says on here. We've got a lot of comments tonight of saying, oh, this person sucks or that band sucks or this band, this guy's the greatest singer of all time. I know what you mean. You're saying to me, but it always is nice if you say that. Even I forget sometimes. Uh James Cook, guess who is feuding as well in court? Well, yeah, we've we've done a lot of things on the guess who. I interviewed the new guess who. Derek Sharp, a Gary Peterson, the original drummer. We just had him on not that long ago. Probably didn't make Burton Cummings very happy, but I'm on Burton Cummings' side on this. <coughs> Excuse me. Let me mute for a second because I'm going to cough. K 
Okay, I'm going to show you the, uh, these are the inductees. I got to keep rolling this and I'll keep talking. There's the people who got in this year. Mary J. Blige, Cher, Do You Believe in Dave Matthews Band. Love Dave Matthews Band. Great band. Foreigner. Good for them. Peter, I'm Alive, Frampton. Cool in the gang. Who were big long before they had hits. Ozzy Osbourne, second time. Black Sabbath, Tribe Called Quest. Little hip hop from, from New York City. Uh, Musical Excellent Award, uh, Jimmy Buffett, MC5. Good, well-deserved for MC5. Dionne Warwick, Norman Whitfield. Write another hit. He's long dead, poor guy. Musical Influence Award, Alexis Corner. British blues uh, uh, legend, John Mayle is another one. Uh, Big Mama Thornton and Suzanne DePass. These are the people who got in this year. And uh, I, I, you know what? That, this thing, hey, I mean... When this happens every year, there's a fervor that comes around with the fact that this is not my rock and roll, right? Right? I know this. I know that this is every people come on and they go, well, this is not my this is rock and roll fame. This is for me. I know how you feel. I get that. When you know, when you were a kid and someone said to you before it was it happened, if you were a kid and someone said to you, well, they're gonna do this rock and roll hall of fame. You know, you would have went, oh, yeah. And you had all this list of people. And if you were a rocker, you would have listed a whole bunch of rockers, right? Kansas and Foreigner and all these bands if you grew up in the 70s. And in the 60s, you know, Cream, well, they're in. But the, all these bands, Jimi Hendrix experience, uh, you would have had this list of people that you wanted. And even if you were an 80s child, you you, you would have had your list, you know. Um and then what happened to the rock and roll ha happened to you with your rock and roll hall of fame? You go, well, wait a minute. That's not my rock and roll. No, no, no. Rock and roll fame for me. It's for my music. And I understand that. But again, their precedent a long time ago was people that influenced rock and roll. And a lot of that ain't rock and roll. It even goes back to like uh, uh, rockability, early country uh, blues, R and B, so they had to. They looked at that. I mean, I'm I'm speaking for them here, uh, but I'm not representing them really because I I don't agree with what they did, did. But they've done it. It's it's out there now, and if they're going to honor the people that were doing it before rock and roll was called rock and roll, they I think decided that they can't stop doing that, which pisses people off every freaking year every year i understand that and so here i'm telling you listen they set precedent that's what it is you got to accept it i'm not really saying accept it i understand every year i look at the list you know i i, I mary j blige didn't bother me i'm not a mary j blige fan at all i can name you maybe five songs of hers but i know enough about her to know that this is a big influential uh, person in her genre of music and in music in general. Great performer, lights up the stage, big show. And, and it took me a long time to get there with Mayor J. Blige. Really, really, really did, but I get it. Okay, let's get some comments. Uh, I'm going to put the list on again while I read comments. Okay, rock music ain't dead. Just resting, a, a AIV57, Debbie Carroll, The Lizards, Cactus, uh, John Village Advisor. Hey, John, bad company. We're just a shooting star. I love that song. A lot of great songs about, you know, uh, hard times in rock and roll. Cleo Geo. If you don't make the critics happy, you know, get in a lot uh, oh, of time. Yeah. Robert LaPointe, Steve Miller uh, cries about not being in the hall. He is in the hall like the Steve Miller band, but Steve Miller is in the Hall of Fame. Um, James Cook, first learning the guitar, they teach you the blues scale. Yeah, of course they do. Of course they do. I mean, God, blues, Led Zeppelin. How about a band that made a living? People always get on me. They'll say, how come you don't like the first Led Zeppelin album? You know, I used to always say, oh, it's too bluesy. And they go, well, yeah, everything's bluesy. 
There's still a lot of riffs there in the blues arena. Ask Randy California. Uh, Stairway to Heaven. Remember that? Okay. We've got a lot of people on here, so we're going to stay on for a little while. Um, Cleo Geo, uh, I read that. Eric Z, rock and roll, uh, rock history music. Rock music is over seven years old. Hip hop just turned 50. We are several generations out. I grew up in the 90s. I'm 42. I grew up in rock and rap. Yeah, there you go. Michael R. Swing Out Sister. Uh, I interviewed them when they were recording an album in 2003. Um, they were really nice. Um, nope, Bad Company's not in. They're not. You see, Allison Chains. Are Allison Chains in? Oh, Bread. Bread's not in. I'm pretty sure Bread's not in. David Gates, as far as I know, is David Gates not the only person alive uh, uh, for Bread? I think David Gates is the only guy still alive. Like, if someone will correct me, because you guys are great. <laughs> uh, one thing about... Listen, I've been in radio 41 years. Um... I've been, uh, I'm not a historian, but I, 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 uh, cause I hate people who give themselves a title and stuff, but I will say that, uh, I, 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 I study music a lot and I have to, to do this channel. And I tell you, man, you make a mistake on this channel. They're going to let you know, you're going to do this. Got to do your homework. But now and then you get things wrong. The other day I said, Steve Hackett was born in 1980 cause I was reading a script and I was going on autopilot mode which sometimes happens if you're a broadcaster, right? I've retired from broadcasting just a, like a month and a half ago. So there you go. Eric Z, Rocky Street Music. I am asking myself how many post-2000 bands will, hold on, get into the Rock Hall, White Stripes, uh, Lincoln Park, Coldplay, all those. Yeah, for sure. Brian Berkshire, Blue Oyster Cult, uh, not being in is a travesty. Uh, like I said, Buck Dharma, I just interviewed him on Friday. We talked about MC5 a lot. And um, uh, uh, I I think the, uh, Blue Oyster Cult will get in. I think they will. There's such diversity in... in um, um, by the way, Kick Out the Jams is in the new... The MC5 song is on the new uh, reunion Blue Oyster Cult thing where the uh, uh, Albert and Joe Bouchard came in and finished some songs that they originally did a long time ago. So... That's good news for the new album. The new album's really good. I'm very pleased with it. But we talked about MC5 quite a bit. And uh, so, let's see, read some more comments. I have never, I mean, short of someone passing away, and we do come on when someone dies, because we have to. The Music Sanctuary. Hey, I love the name of your channel. Do you have like, what do you do on your channel? It's called Rock and Roll Hall of Fame for a reason. Start Music Hall of Fame. There you go. Tell me about your channel, Music Sanctuary. Do you have a, give you a little plug there? Brian Berkshire. Hey, for all I know, you're a huge channel. Long Duck, <laughs> Long Duck Dong. <laughs> Sweet 16. <laughs> uh, Poco. Poco should be influential. Yeah. Well, A, they were like, I, I told Richie Fiore, I've interviewed him a few times, and they've just asked me to be in the Richie Fiore documentary. But he was the man who started Poco uh, after Buffalo Springfield and uh, Jim, Jim Messina was there. But anyway, I, I told him once, I said, you know, I got in a lot of trouble when I called Poco the farm team for the Eagles because Randy Meisner was originally in Poco, went to the Eagles. And then uh, his replacement in Poco with Timothy B. Schmidt, and then he replaced Randy Meisner in, in the Eagles. So it's kind of interesting. He says, oh, I can imagine that didn't go down very well, but Poco was a heavily influential. Poco will get in. They've got to get in. They really deserve it. Poco, yes. Cleo Geo. Brian Wallace. Uh, Robert Cool Bell. The original of Cool and the Gang. Um, is he alive? I thought he had died. Brian Wallace, Little River Band. I thought Robert Cool Bell had died. Let me look that up. Is he still alive? I mean, it'd be great if... Hold on. No, 
No, he's still alive. Good for, hey, Gabe, good call. Good call. It says here he's 73. Man, that that's, there you go. Good stuff. Uh, rock and roll woman says, I saw Richie Fury last, oh, last night. Uh, good, but Jim Messina last weekend. Wow, you're really in in that in that uh, vein. Uh, Sin City Jim Quicksilver Messenger Service was another awesome fresh band. Oh yeah, and ha- very influential. Uh, LRB, I agree. Uh, Brian Wall says LRB. Uh, Poco, yes. Uh, thanks, Brian. Yeah, he's still alive. Uh, Poco, a lot of people saying Poco. Right on. <clears throat> Yes, I agree. Flash Gordon, uh, Big Mama Thornton is part of a rock and roll history. Um, oh, Long Duck Dong, God, Sweet Sixteen, eh? <laughs> what a great movie that is! Uh, some of those John Hughes films from the eighties were. I have a twenty-year-old son who's an exceptional drummer. I know every parent says that my my kid's the best. I'm not saying he's the best. But Chase was given, and for, I'm sorry for those who have heard this before. When Neil Peart saw Chase play when he was eight years old, he sent him concert use sticks. When he, Chase, just look up Chase, uh, Tom Sawyer. And he's playing an electric kid, and he's just eight years old. And I know there's a lot of better kids that are eight now because Chase got himself off YouTube when he was about 10. He said, Dad, I don't want to be one of the nine million protege kids. He's, I don't want to be called that. I don't want to be on YouTube. I don't like the attention. I just want to be in my band at school. And now he's in this killer band at 20 years old. But I've told him to watch all the, the, like, usual, on the usual suspects, all the movies he should be in. Oh, uh, back says the Osmond brothers. I don't think that's ever going to happen. Culturally, the Osmond brothers were a big band culturally, but... They didn't. I was just listening to Crazy Horses the other day by the Osmond Brothers because I had a family member who had it. And I went, I wonder if it's as bad as I remember. And it wasn't. It wasn't as bad. Remember Crazy Horses? That was a crazy song. Uh, Ten years after Sin City, uh, Iron Butterfly, uh, Rock and Roll Woman says Parliament Funkadelic. The Guess Who, uh, the guy who wrote um, the Guess Who book, which I had on, said he didn't think the Guess Who would ever get in. I think they I think they deserve to get in. Uh, Sin City, Jim, Steppenwolf. Oh, yeah. Born to be Wild Baby. Magic Carpet Ride. A DOV version 2.1. What the heck? Uh, rock and roll was a term that represents any type of music that will make your body rock and roll. Yeah. Brian Wall, Stylistics. You make me feel brand new, baby. Vicky. I do believe they should have categories. Yes. Yes, it's not too late to do that, right? It's not too late to have categories. You could change it. Uh, but I'm thinking out loud. They'd have to change everything else, right? So if you have categories, they'd have to ch- have to go back now and change it. And that would cause, yeah, as I'm thinking out loud, that would cause a little fervor for some people of going, but I agree I agree. This lighting makes me look kind of weird. Kind of devilish. What the? Man, I'm going to start conspiracy theories. You know, every day when I look at my video channel, there's always someone. Starting a conspiracy theory. There's always someone doing something. Every single day. On the channel. These are the people who won. These are the people who got in. There's Frampton. I love you, Peter Frampton. One of my favorite albums of all time. And I even liked I'm In You. I went back and bought the earlier albums <clears throat> after that. Why? Because they're that good. <clears throat> I thought Something's Happening was just one of the greatest songs. The song he opens up. <clears throat> Mr. Peter Frampton. It's the first song he plays on Frampton Comes Alive. John Mayle's Blues Breakers, John Mayle, <clears throat> Big Mama Thornton, certainly deserves, and Suzanne DePass, who was a music executive, and that's what the Amit Erdogan Award is always uh, awarded to. People who made a big difference. Fog Hat, Cleo Geo, I just interviewed <clears throat> two members of Fog Hat, 
um, a couple of months ago and I just realized I completely forgot about the interview and I went, oh, we put it on the, our, our, uh, our podcast, which we just eliminated because our podcast was costing, costing us too much money. And I went, I'm just going to stick to, I'm going to stick to, to YouTube. I'm going to stick to Facebook, uh, to Instagram, but the podcast is not making us any money. We're losing money on our podcast. Meanwhile, we have 130,000 subscribers on YouTube and we're making money on that. So yeah, so. And by the way, thanks for the folks. I just already got some notifications from our other stream. Thanks for the folks who make donations to our channel. We're trying to buy a Shure SM7B microphone, which is better than, this is a good little blue, a Yeti blue microphone, but it's not cutting it for the type of narration and uh, a documentary style things that we're doing. So we're buying this $600 microphone and a lot of you the other night made donations and thank you for that. Uh, it's a great microphone. So many people use it on, on podcasts. And second, I said that people, cause we have a, a PayPal donation a, a link right at the very top of, of, of uh, the description of this video and all our videos. So thank you for the folks, especially on our other stream uh, on the Facebook stream who uh, came forward and, and and made some donations. So thank you. That means an awful lot to us because, uh, and you can join our Patreon, get early access to our videos, just a quick note. And, uh, but the, the, the people who just donate on, on PayPal, I mean, it means an awful lot to us. So thank you. There's a link in the description. If you ever want to make a donation, help the channel, help us buy this, this damn sure SM seven B microphone, which we need to do better, you know, cause when we do a thing now we do, these are all the people who got, who got, um, who got into the rock and roll fame for the class of 2024. Congratulations. And also of course, people give us super chats. We always appreciate that. Hey, Mark Burchett. Thank you very much. Oh, $10. Thank you. Towards a sure again, you've already contributed. Thank you. Means an awful lot to us. Congratulations to all the folks who got in Norman Whitfield. So many hits. It's insane. And John Mayo, you know, John's way up there at age. <clears throat> so many people are getting in and then, you know, they're getting in and they're not alive anymore. <laughs> you know, that's the thing that happens with, uh, with the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Oh, the fifth dimension. Oh, the biggest slight. Yeah. Up, up and away, baby. Um, I was. Oh, uh, Sin City said uh, BTO is not in as well. BTO deserves to be in. <clears throat> Did you read the thing on Ultimate Classic Rock today? Speaking of one of my favorite sites, all, I think it was Ultimate Classic. It might not be them. I don't want to quote for sure, but Ultimate Classic Rock's my favorite website. Love them. They've used some of our, they've quoted us many times, but but I'm not sure if it was them. But anyway, someone had said today that Ann and Nancy Wilson used to steal Backman Turner Overdrive's food when they were starving to death when they were on tour in the early days <clears throat> with Randy and the boys. Randy and Fred Turner and, and Backman Turner Overdrive. Can you imagine? Because they used to steal their turkeys and stuff. <laughs> their chickens or whatever it was. What? And we've interviewed a lot of the people from Heart. Steve Fossen, the Fisher Brothers, uh, Michael uh, DeRogier, uh, DeRogier, as English people say. But great bunch of guys who are all in the rock and roll thing. Okay, uh, let's. I'm gonna read some while I I'm, I I have to do this because people are coming in all the time and they want to say, well, who got in? So I'm gonna I'm gonna put the screen on again and I'm gonna read on top of it. These are the inductees. Okay. Uh, oh, uh, James Cook says I'm seeing BTO in July. Mark Murphy, bad company for sure, I agree. Ram Jam, I'm not sure if they'll ever get in, but they were influential. Rock and Roll Woman, Boston, it's absurd that Boston isn't in. I agree, even based on those first two albums. That's good enough, baby. <laughs> um, uh, Michael R. said, Ann and Nancy Wilson are not heart. It ended in 81. Lost in Space, Ario Speedwagon. Agreed on Ario Speedwagon for sure. Uh, Cleo Geo, Procol Harum, they're not in? Um... A, uh, is it A.L. Val? Al Val? Jimmy Webb. Oh, Wichita Lyman, man. Wrote so many great songs, most notably, of course, for Glenn Campbell, but deserves to be in. You know, before when I used to play videos, if anybody's been following the channel for quite a long time, and thank you, by the way, for the donations. Remember, PayPal link in the description. 
if you ever want to help out the channel, because we've got to buy this, I don't want to say damn mic, but we, we just can't cut it with this microphone. So thank you so much for the people. We're buying a Shure SM7B. Uh, for, the, for the channel, it's going to be right here and it's going to be so clear and anyway. So we, we, throughout the years, we've had so many people come, come in and tell us who they want us to interview, which is great. I love that. Some people we can't. Now and then I'll get someone say, hey, can you interview and so-and-so? And I'll have to email them back and say, I'm sorry, that person's no longer with us. Because not everyone, you know, um, when I talk about the Elton John story, Elton John's in, Bernie Toppin's in, the, the, the backup band's here's, here's Here's my story. Uh, I, I, I've been working for this, this big uh, station in Vancouver, a 14C Fund. If anyone knows Vancouver, they'll know 14C Fund. Monumental station they were back in the old days. So I worked with them near the end of their incarnation, near the last 10 years or something like that. I was the last person to do music on 14C Fund. So I always say I broke the station. But anyway, I go to an Elton John concert and they say, you've got to go and talk to the people. Go interview the people at the Elton John concert. I go, oh, this is great. Get free Elton John tickets. They go, well, you don't get tickets. I go, what? Well, you're going to be out in the van outside uh, 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 Pacific Coliseum. I said, well, what? You know, the p &E grounds. I go, well, what? I can't get tickets. You're the biggest station in town. He said, well, whatever. We don't have tickets. We gave them away. So I'm outside, and when people are coming out, I'm holding a little microphone, a little radio guy. I've been in radio quite a few years. And I ask people what their favorite Elton John song is. And really, swear to God, I got 10 different songs, and that was it. Everyone knew the same 10 songs. They, they couldn't deviate from that. And this would have been in the early 90s. I think it was a solo show, if I remember. I could hear it. You know, when you're standing outside of a concert, you could, you could tell what he's playing, but you can't hear it very well. So I'm saying this because there's a lot of Fairweather music fans who are not bad music fans. It's not their fault they don't know more than 10 Elton John songs. When they go to the concert, they'll recognize most of the songs because Elton, like most classic rock, classic performers, they stick to the hits. But they don't always know the songs. And when it comes to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, I notice a lot of you on here are not fair with a music fan. You're not like, you know your stuff, a lot of you. You know, that's what I like about Rock History Music, doing this channel. You know, I've been in radio 31 years when I started this channel. And now it's 41 years and I just retired from radio. And one thing that you guys have taught me more than anything is you know your stuff. And I love that. I love that because if you, if you, if you take music seriously, you don't want to go to a party and the guy says, that Millie Vanilli, man, really changed my life. You, you, you want to you wanna sit beside a guy at a party that you just met and you start talking about rock and roll. Everyone's done that. Everyone who's watching has been to a party where they sit down if they're serious about music or serious in this art, and then you run into someone who loves the music you love. That's what the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame should be to me, but it's not. It can't be everything to everybody. So I don't know why I mentioned that. Just thought I'd... Man, it doesn't matter. Uh, Mark Murphy, Triumph gets uh, my vote for sure. Yeah, totally agree. Triumph will get it, I think. Uh, Ridge Graff, Back Mature and Overdrive is the absolute must to be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. They are so rock and roll. I will see them in June in Nashville. I've interviewed Randy Backman three times. I'm trying to get him again. Uh, Sin City, Molly Hatchet. Uh, oh, you took out, okay, you took out your comment. Mark Burchett, Elton John song, Elder, Elderberry Wine is my favorite. Mark, I always say, uh, Teacher, I Need You and Elderberry Wine, you know, they're they're back to back on Don't You and Only the Piano Player, uh, are, are two songs that sound like hit singles. I say of all the albums, and I'm not saying, Madman's, uh, Don't Shoot Me is not my favorite Elton John album. It's up there. It's way up there. But Don't Shoot Me had every single song on Don't Shoot Me sound like a hit single. Elton John had a lot of albums like that, but to me, it really, Don't Shoot Me really had no bad songs. Like, it just sounded amazing. Uh, when I first heard Have Mercy on the Criminal, I remember going, oh, those, those, that, 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 that horn, not the horn section, that, um, that orchestration is just too much for me. Too much. And then I ended up loving it. Uh, blues for Baby and Me. Oh, my God. Uh, no Easy Way. Joe is in. Uh, we're talking. Oh, oh, Joe Cocker. Yeah. Uh, MC, uh, MC5. Here, I'll play it again. I'll talk. There. 
These are the people who are in this year. I'm sorry for the folks who have been on here for a lot of a long time. I have to keep playing this because it, in, instead of me just reading off a list, there you go. These are the actual pictures from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame that they posted today. Here's Ozzy, second time. Tribe called Quest, going to New York City, Queens, MC5, Michigan's finest. There's Dionne Warwick, Hal David, Burt Backrack songs, Norman Whitfield. Talk about a lot of hits. Let me, let me just talk about Norman Whitfield here in a second. Norman Whitfield, ain't too proud to beg. I know I'm losing you. I heard it through the grapevine. Um, I can't get next to you. War, ball of confusion, just my imagination. Smiling face sometimes. Papa was a Rolling Stone. Whoa! You know, so many bands. Like, he should have been in a long time ago. Don't understand, but that's okay. Mark Bolin. Frampton. Yes. 100%. I think a lot of people are really happy about Foreigner and Frampton. The Eps. Those are the two that make me the happiest. Um, a Cleo Geo Nazareth? I hope so. We only have... Uh, Pete Agnew left in Nazareth, right? They're all gone. I I interviewed Dan McCafferty just before he died. Maybe when he released his solo album, maybe a year before he died. And then I think I think he released it a year before he died. And about six months before he died, I, I interviewed him. And he was such a nice guy, but his Scottish accent was so thick that a lot of people complained. I mean, it's not his fault. It's, it's his accent. It's how he talks, right? Um. Yeah, Mark. Uh, Mark. Mark. You're right. Cool in the gang isn't rock and roll, but a lot of other people on there are not rock and roll. Males guitarist change music. Mark Bolin. Thank you. I, I get a feeling you're not the real Mark Bolin because he's long dead. Um. Brian Berkshire, uh, Mitch Ryder, and the Detroit Wheels. Yeah. The band Love was very influential. Very very true. Sin City. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Um, Love Hurts. Great, great song. Great version of that song, right? Because they didn't write that song. Um, Douglas Struthers, High Flying Bird. Oh, yeah. Don't show me I'm only the piano player. High Flying Birds, if you don't know, and, and, and you know, if you're hanging around, if you don't know the song, <clears throat> if you've got a pencil nearby, and if you don't know High Flying Bird by Elton John, just... Write it down. I dropped my mic. No, I won't. I need to buy a new mic. Uh, High Flying Bird sounds like a hit single. Such a beautiful song. One of the most beautiful songs. Elton John. I know he's in. Bernie Toppy's in. Bernie Toppin's in. Did I say Bernie Toppy? I'm the biggest Elton John fan. What the hell? Uh, Hal says, if Foreigner gets in, will Lou show up? Foreigner is in. So this is the list. Uh, again, I'll talk again. I'll talk on top of it. Foreigner did get in. These are the people. I have to play this over and over again, but that's okay. I'm just talking over it. These are the performers who got in. Here's Foreigner. Here's Frampton. Congratulations. <clears throat> Here's Ozzy, second time in. He used to badmouth the Rock and Roll fame, but hey, he was happy to get in. You're allowed to change your mind. Nothing wrong with that. MC5. <clears throat> Dion Warwick, Norma Whitfield, great writer. Ah, oh, great producer. These are the folks. I can't tell you how many times, how many times John Mayle comes up in interviews. You know, John Mayle's Blues Breakers, you know, the Clapton thing. How many times throughout when people talk about the history of rock and roll going way back? It's just crazy. Um... And and foreigner comes up. You know who told me? You know who told me Lou Graham was the greatest rock singer of all time? A gentleman I interviewed seven times, uh, uh, Ian Anderson of Jethro Tull. I, I it just came up one day. I don't even know if I asked him, but he he volunteered it, or else I might have asked him because that was a few interviews ago. He says, "Bar none, the greatest rock singer out there is Lou Graham." And I went, "Whoa, high praise coming from uh, Ian Anderson." I'd ask Ian Anderson sometimes, okay, uh, how'd you how'd you write this song? Or Aqualon, how'd that come? Thick as a brick, how'd that come up? 
And a lot of times he'd say, oh, so sheer boredom. I'm going, what? Huh? What? You know, uh, <laughs> Minstrel in the Gallery. God, I love that album. Um, Passion Play with a hair who lost his spectacles. He didn't write that part. but He'd say from sheer boredom, he'd go, I'd be in a hotel room just bored. <laughs> I went, what? No, Ian Anderson, don't tell me that. He said, no, I didn't party. Ian Anderson did not party. So he would be bored. And he'd go back to his hotel room and just write songs because there was nothing else to do. He said, I wasn't going to watch TV all the time. What? It's cool. I'm glad he got bored. Glad he wrote those songs. Um, Robert LaPointe, Foreigner is richly deserving. Yes, I was so into Foreigner for a long time. I saw them on the Head Games tour. And uh, hold on, do I still? Oh, I don't have it. I'm not hooked into my, am I still hooked into, hold on. Let me just see if I'm still hooked into my, um, no, I'm not. I thought I was hooked into my NAS. Um, uh, my networked attach. Um, I have a NAS which has eight uh, hard drives and I keep all my interviews on there and I keep all my, you know, if you know, if you work at Photoshop, you know what a PNG is. PNG is just a, the outline of the picture with nothing in the background. I use a lot of those. I, I used it for the poster, right? Uh, Debbie Carroll. Um, Kelly Hansen was great with Foreigner, but no Lou Graham. Well, you, you the fact that Foreigner is doing a farewell tour with no buddy who ever played on any of the hits. Come on. Everyone's talking about the guess who right now, not being the guess who. You can't have a, <clears throat> I'm going to cough. So I'm going to play the thing again. Let me cough for a second. These are the folks who are getting in. Sorry, I had to cough. Coughing up a lung. This morning I, I got a chill and I coughed for, oh, I don't know how long it was. Maybe 40 coughs. It was crazy. These are the inductees for the class of 2024. And by the way, uh, thank you. Uh, we're getting more donations on our Facebook feed tonight than we are. Uh, and that's okay. Either way, times are tough. But I appreciate when anyone helps us out with our quest to buy a better microphone. It never stops. There's always something you, you've got to do. Oh, someone was asking me, before we get back to the Rock and Roll fame, someone was asking me today, are you going to use uh, um, a chat GPT stuff, AI stuff on your channel? And we don't have reason to do that right now. We don't have any reason to um, to ever do that. We, we have a lot of graphics that we use. Oh, Ted Nugent. I don't know if Ted Nugent will ever get in. I, I think he deserves to get in. I'm not a Ted Nugent fan. I think he's a little, but uh, that doesn't take away from, I, I like a lot of his music when I was growing up beyond the proverbial cat scratch fever. Uh, but my, a lot of my friends love Ted Nugent. I never bought a Ted Nugent album in my life and I never will, but I think he was heavily influential. That's for sure. Um, anyway, I was beginning to say something and I lost it. Someone might recall, might come up and tell me what it is. No Easy Way, uh, Megadeth, Symphony of Destruction. Uh, stay away from AI, Cleo Geo. Well, I don't have reason to use AI, right? I mean, I did you see that thing with the new AI? That this, oh, I digress here a little bit. Uh, there's, there's that uh, show me a, a, a scene from up in the sky of like the old West or something like that. And they're flying, they're, 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 it's like a spaceship flying above. Of course, that's impossible. But it's AI creating this. And you look down and you're going, that looks like the old West. Um, the companies that are have spent a lot of money on vintage, um, vintage scenes of LA from the 50s or the 60s. And they bought some of these from old, like, uh, 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 old sales of, of like, you know, when someone sells everything and they die, uh, uh, what's the name of it? Uh, I can't think of it. I'm getting tired. Um, 
they paid a lot of money for that stuff. You know what I mean? And and I had a few relatives pass on, and the first thing I'd ask of, hey, do they have any film? And they go, why do you want their film? I'm going, yeah, but they traveled a lot. Chances are they didn't just film each other. And if you don't want that stuff or else give me a copy of it or something. But everyone gets really funny about that. And I'm going, I can understand that. But AI will, it, YouTube tells you if you're going to use AI, you got to let them know. Okay. Uh, Ken McDonald, Scorpions or UFO and UFO. Uh, Debbie Carroll, uh, Ted is nuts. <laughs> you, Ted's a little out there, you know. Ted Nugent's, a, I mean, whether you're, it's not about being a, a, a swing in one way or the other politically. Ted's a little kooky, okay? Uh, Max Brand, Clapton joined the Blues Breakers after he left the Yardbirds. Yep. Uh, Mark Burchett, Mark Murphy, Gene Simmons, and Cher, Dinah Ross, LOL, Fabulous Thunderbirds. I don't know if the Fabulous Thunderbirds will ever get anything. Estate sale. Thanks, James Cook. That's the word I'm looking for. A lot of people go to estate sales and they look for film. But in the age of AI, if you say, I want a picture, I want Marilyn Monroe coming out of a saloon. I don't know if you can use Marilyn Monroe because that's someone owns her, someone owns uh, the uh, the likeness of Marilyn Monroe or whatever. But uh, the copyright or whatever you want to call it. But you could say, I want a, a blonde girl who looks like Marilyn Monroe coming out of a saloon in... 18, whatever, and, and AI will create it for you. I have no need for that, but okay, let's get some comments. Patrick, uh, Morganam, uh, Patricia, sorry, Patricia, Gary Moore. I don't know if Gary Moore will ever get in. Certainly innovative guitarist. That's for sure. I liked his stuff with Thin Lizzy. Uh, three card Monty. I saw foreigner, the kinks, Joan Jett, lover boy, Tommy two tone. Wow. Hugh Lewis and the News in concert back in the 1980s in Philly. Wow, that's quite a... Uh, Tommy James and the Shondells should definitely be in. I don't think they're in. James Cook. You ever read Tommy James' book? Who was it? Uh, Chuck Negron. It was Chuck Negron of Three Dog Night who told me the best book to read about music is Tommy James' book because Tommy James basically got in with the wrong crowd you know, concerning his music. And... Uh, started realizing, wait a minute, I'm being, I'm being, uh, I'm, I'm being f sort of bankrolled by the mob. <clears throat> and uh, he walked in and basically, you know, said, I, I don't want this to happen. Of course, then after that, his career went downhill and he started going, and people say, well, you were doing well. You know, I'm paraphrasing this whole thing, but it's, to me, I think that's the gist of it. If I'm wrong, please correct me. <clears throat> Okay, bad company is huge oversight. I agree. A pause to purr. I agree. <clears throat> Mark Murphy. Um, Cleo Geo, Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young. Yeah, the Young part, they're not in. Rick Derringer. I was just watching a video of Rick Derringer the other day. He was talking about uh, Dickie Betts. Um, I'd like to get Rick Derringer. Who was it that told me Rick Derringer is one of the most underrated? I think it was uh, Bill Simzik, the producer of the Eagles. I think it was who told me, do you remember Terry Brown, uh, the, the Rush producer? No, I think it was Bill Simzik that said that Rick Derringer is one of the most underrated artists of all time. I'm going high praise, right? <clears throat> A uh, rock and roll woman says there's plenty of new talent out there. Yeah. Bernie Sheravelli, not new. Ber uh, let me, let me, let me hold on. So that for people who don't know how to spell his name and Bernie's poor guy's probably waiting for me, my interview to come up. Hold on. Give me a second. Don't, don't go away. I'm going to show you this guy. Hold on. Um, give me a second. I'll, I'll get it for you. This guy's, I wake up every morning. Here we go. Just bear with me here. It's worth it. Oh, right here. Come on, focus, focus, focus. I'll bring it over here. This guy, Bernie Sheravelli. 
Come on. Bernie is spelled C-H-I-A-V-A-R-A-V-A-L-L-E. So C-H-I-A-R-A-V-A-L-L-E. Bernie Chiaravelli is an artist every morning, bar none. I wake up with his music in my head every morning. He's my favorite, and he's not a new artist, but he was new to me. And he's Michael McDonald's guitar player and has been for like 34 years or something. Uh, give me a second. Anyway, his music is crazy good. I play it, but I can't because of copyright. <clears throat> Let's get back to our regularly scheduled program. <clears throat> Again, sorry guys if you've been here the entire time. Uh, the winners, the class of 2024 in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, here they are. Mary J. Blige, performance category, Cher. Do you believe? The Dave Matthews Band. Oh, God, they're a tight band. Foreigner, good for them. Peter Frampton, cool in the gang. Ozzy Osbourne's going to get in for the second time. Tribe Called Quest. <clears throat> Jimmy Buffett in the Musical Excellence Award. What a great guy. MC5. Man, they've been nominated a long time. Dionne Warwick. I know, rock, rock and roll, but neither is Norman Whitfield. who wrote so many great songs. Musical uh, Influence Award, Alexis. God, that went by quick. Let me just get... Anyway, Alexis Corner is the founding father of British blues. And let me get back on. And the, the, the one thing I like about the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, it does make people go into and say, hey, I'm going to dig a little deeper here. I'm going to look into that per person. Jim Croce is not in. AI. Uh, <clears throat> Cleo Geo Blackfoot is not in. Um, Mark Boland, yeah. Cher, <laughs> Mary J. Blige, Reality. <clears throat> Long Duke Dong. Love your username. Um, Meatloaf? No, Meatloaf's not in. Rock and Roll Woman. Zombies are, uh, are recent, though. Yeah, I talked to the zombies... I talked to them just, I think, maybe a little while. Uh, no, about a year after they were inducted. Yeah. Rod Argent's just a... Man, what a mind that guy has. And, of course, Argent. Remember? Hold your head up. Remember? Yeah. A lot of... You know, if you don't know our channel, if you're just new to our channel, uh, we interview... We have a, a new interview practically every day. We don't do it as much now because we follow a lot of music and news. Um, a Cleo Geo Argent, yeah. Sunshine, Cool Water, Bad Fingers should be in. Uh, Bad Fingers sounded, of course, quite, on they come upon it honestly. <clears throat> they sounded, they had, they're one of those bands from the, that era of the early 70s, um, 60s, late 60s, early 70s, that sounded like the Beatles, but they were on the Apple music label, right? So, yeah. And when you lose your two lead singers to they unalive themselves, it's kind of a tough thing, right? Oh, Debbie Carroll, thank you all for sharing your great musical uh, memories of music. Thank you. That, thank you. Very well said. Uh, AI, Val, uh, Herman's Hermits, I don't believe they're in. I don't think so. Um, a lot of people said Badfinger. Yeah. Uh, Mott the Hoople, Mark Bolin, I don't think, Mott, no, Mott the Hoople's not in. But thank, Debbie, that's so nice to use. Thank you, everyone, for sharing your musical memories. That's, that's, that's really nice. I see Foreigner coming in, you know, I'm just happy. I'm happiest about, again, I understand Mary J. Blige, share, I think about it a little bit more, and I, I can understand that, too, because of the, culturally, she was, Shares more. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. Cher can sing. She's a great singer. Not my kind of singer at all. But, but I look at Cher as more of a performer, uh, entertainer rather than, um, and these big over the top shows. You know, uh, not something I'd ever go to. But again, my neighbor who's straight across the street, uh, Kent. He said he went to see him and uh, Nicola, his wife. They went to see Cher, and she was lip syncing. I think if you go see a Cher show, you kind of expect that a little bit. I don't think you're, I don't think it's a stretch, right? But a big, you know, made a, made a, made a difference in, in, in the, 
culturally, that's for sure. Okay, Flash Gordon, still going. Okay, what Flash Gordon, still going. What's your favorite band in the years of Hall of Fame rock and roll inductees? Um, well, Elton John's my favorite artist of all time. Uh, and in the 80s, it, it certainly was uh, Bruce Hornsby. When I heard Bruce Hornsby in the range, I... And then it was Bruce Hornsby by Harbor Lights. It was Bruce Hornsby solo uh, with Pat Metheny on there. And, and, you know, it was, I just went nuts. And now in the last few years, Bruce Hornsby's just turned into almost an avant-garde artist to a point where I don't really relate to his music that much. I'm still looking for that stuff. I don't want him to do the way it is over and over again. No, I, uh, I'm going to cough. So I'm going to put the roll on again. Hope you didn't hear that, but you probably did. I get, um, my mouth gets really, uh, when I do a live feed. Uh, we're going to be on here maybe for another. These are the people who got in this year. Just announced, we announced it. It was announced about maybe two hours ago. We've been on for about an hour and a half. This is probably one of the longest feeds I've had in a long time. Um, Alexis Corner uh, is known as uh, one of the godfathers, the founding the big guys in the British blues music. And Norm uh, Jesse Whitfield was a producer and writer who wrote a lot of songs uh, during the Motown and otherwise stage. Well, worked with and or produced and or wrote Ain't Too Proud to Beg. I knew I'm losing you. I heard it through the grapevine. Who doesn't know that song, right? This guy should have been in a long time ago. And he's dead. I can't uh, get next to you. Uh, just my imagination. Papa was a Rolling Stone. Like, man. <clears throat> you know, some of these guys. Okay, my voice is starting to go a little bit. Uh, it, it doesn't help that <clears throat> this morning I coughed like 40 times. The babies, James Cook. I don't think the babies will ever get in. Uh, not that they weren't a great band. Uh, uh, I remember I used to like John Waite's voice when I first heard the babies. Jonathan Cain used to be there. Um, Flash Gordon. I've listened to a great amount of uh, Alexis Corner albums, but I haven't finished him off. Oh, cool. Sunshine, Cool Water. The Turtles, Flo and Eddie. Uh, Ronnie Parker, Wet Willie. A lot of bands that, yeah, on a... But James Cook says, Bruce Hornsby in the range. John, how would you classify... The effect. Well, the effect is a hard rock band. This is uh, uh, this is uh, Phil Collins' uh, son, Nick Collins, and Steve Lukather's son, um, Trev Lukather. They're a new band, but they're a rock band. At times, they're a rock pop band, but they're mostly a rock band when you see them in concert. And I've interviewed them. They've been on here. When I saw, sorry, I'm getting tired. When I saw uh, Steve Lukather backstage here in Calgary. <clears throat> I had a chance to see all the band. Um, Shannon Forrest invited us backstage. It was great. Their drummer. And uh, the first thing Luke did, Steve Luke, he said, Hey, John. Hey, man. Nice to see you. But thanks for helping my kid, man. I appreciate it. And uh, Steve's always just a good guy <laughs> to hang out with. But it was really nice because my son, Chase, came down with me backstage. And Chase, a big Shannon Forrest fan. And Shannon had said that when he played with Donald Fagan uh, and Boss Skaggs and Michael McDonald, one of the things that he had, Donald Fagan had told Shannon Force as a drummer, he said, light and tight, man. How do you want me to play it? Donald Fagan says, just light and tight. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry. Shannon Force is, is one of those drummers that uh, says to drummers what they really need to know. Not everyone wants to be a groove in the pocket, really tight in the pocket kind of drummer. But Chase wants to be, because Chase at an early age was, was able to do the halftime shuffle uh, for Toto Rosanna at eight, was able to do the Bonham uh, Fool in the Rain shuffle, was able to do the Bernard Purdy shuffle, which they all, one moved into the other. And uh, I could never do any of those as a drummer. 
after a, a month, my son said, hey, Dad, can I get a real drummer? The winners this year, Rock and Roll Fame. It's quite a, I mean, to me, I just wanted Frampton and Foreigner to get in, and they did. Dave Matthews, I've been a fan for years. I, I enjoy them. I'm happy. Mr. Frampton, thank you so much for everything you've done. I love Cool and the Gang. Ozzy Osbourne, second time in. <clears throat> a tribe called Quest. Hip Hop from Queens. Jimmy Buffett, of course, MC5. Kick out the jams. MC5. John Warwick, great writer, Norman Whitfield. <clears throat> Excuse me. Blues, Alex Corner, John Mayall, famous for John Mayall and Blues Breakers. Big Mama Thornton. You gotta love uh, Ball and Chain that Janis Joplin also recorded. It's getting late here. Do I have only have West Coast people on here? Because it's getting, it's gotten, like Eastern time, it's like, uh, it's midnight. It's, yeah, it's 12, 14. You know, one of the rules in radio, I remember, I, I, I hate to say people keep coming on, but I, I was in radio 41 years. And one of the things you never say in radio, <clears throat> by the way, if you're going to refer to the time, you'd say the time, but you don't ever tell an audience it's late. I just broke my own rule where you go, oh no, I'm reminding you to go to bed. You never do that in radio. And one of the things that I realized in, in radio in the last few years, and again, I'm, I'm retired now as of a couple of months, is in radio, it, you might not know this, maybe you know this, uh, we never talk about what we just came out of, the, the music we just came out of. It ended up, I, I didn't really agree with that, but the program director said do it. Not my last program director, the one before, said, don't talk about what you just played, just go forward, move forward, talk about the person you're going into. And I'm going, man, sure, I could do that. Anyway, oh, West Coast. Oh, pause to purr. You're in West Coast. There you go. John Village Advisory. At the end of the day, happy with Frampton and Foreigner. Yes, East Coast, Australia. Hey, uh, 1.15 p.m. Monday. Thanks, John. And I appreciate you being on. I, I appreciate that. Uh, Steppenwolf is not in. Al Broderick. I'm in Detroit at the moment. NFL draft stuff. <laughs> oh, Roger. Yeah, Thin Lizzy. I'd like Thin Lizzy again. I don't know if Thin Lizzy will ever get in. I don't, you know. Uh, I was a big Phil Linnett fan. I thought he was a great bass player. Uh, he had a lot of issues. Um, certain things that he put into his system. And uh, it, wasn't a, it wasn't a great demise. It was sad. Um, of course, their hot spot in North America was the, an album called Jailbreak which had their biggest North American hit. The boys are back in town. But even the song Jailbreak, if you know the album, you know, it comes in. Do, 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 do. Such as Graham going, wow, this is an important song. And as far as I remember, Jailbreak was released as a single, but it wasn't a hit. Uh, Michael, John, Bernie Toppin is, uh, Bernie Toppin is Elton John. What? Uh, I'm not sure. Well, Elton John and Bernie Toppin are both in. BOC, but, oh yeah, Mark, uh, Blue Oyster Cult. I remember when I first started doing interviews, someone 10 years ago, and someone had said to me, I don't know where it was. I think it was backstage someplace. Someone said, hey man. Yeah, it was, it was backstage. Someone said to me, hey man, uh, you ever interview BOC? I'm going, what? He said, yeah, BOC, man. I thought you knew something about rock and roll. I'm going, I don't know who BOC is. It's Blue Oyster Cult. <clears throat> I just never heard anybody call them BOC before. So when that happens, you kind of remember it. You when that when someone does that to you, you kind of go, well, I better get her better get to know what BOC is. Oh, Pasta Per love jailbreak. That there's not a bad track on jailbreak. My brother, may he rest in peace. His name is Andrew. Andrew Bowden. Andrew was a um Andrew was a, 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 a guy who couldn't keep still. I got to plug this baby in. Andrew was one of those guys. Um, when Andrew was dying at the cancer clinic in Vancouver, Andrew looked at me and he said, well, it makes sense that I'm dying really quick. He had sarcoma, cancer, uh, bone cancer. And he says, well, it makes sense that uh, I'm dying really quickly. 
because you'd be the guy who would have to really think about it and really kind of like, and I'm going, well, what kind of, why are you telling me that? But I could understand what he said because Andrew couldn't really, he wasn't a deep thinker at all. He was a partier. Andrew was a beautiful, beautiful man. Uh, got a lot of uh, women and, and girls in high school when he was in high school and uh, just was a guy who never really thought deeply, but he was fun. Uh, he lived for today and he died at 36. And uh, this is a few years before I met my wife, Shannon. A lot of you know Shannon from my, my videos. But he bought a, a thing called a big mouth or a loud mouth eight track portable player. Some of you might even remember that player. He bought it and because he didn't pay attention to music, he went and bought the Starland vocal band by accident because he wanted California Girls by Chilliwack. But I think there was a song on the Starland vocal band called California Dreaming from that debut album with Afternoon Delight. So he bought that. He bought The Boys Are Back in Town Jailbreak because it was a song on there that reminded him of another song. He bought The Carpenter's Greatest Hits Volume 1 because he saw a song on there and he thought it was another band. Every every A track he bought was not what he wanted. Ended up being he liked everything he bought in the, in the long run. That's how I got to know Jailbreak, Thin Lizzy. Um... I know, crazy. Okay, one more time. I'm going to talk during this because a lot of you have seen this. These are the people who got into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I have to keep playing this because I would rather not just announce it over and over again for the folks who just joined us because it's just not, it's not cool, man. So these are the performers, and I've already, you know, if I'm not saying anything about each one, <clears throat> it's because I've just been on here for almost two hours talking about MC5, yeah, kick out the jams, baby. That's the number one song on Spotify, by the way. And James, you know, uh, uh, Norma Whitfield, writing all those songs for, for, um, for uh, Motown. Oh, I'm getting tired, I can tell. I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap it up here pretty soon, and our and our listenership's going down. Okay, <clears throat> let me look. Uh, Michael R says uh, uh, Billy Joel, uh, Billy Squire, of the Stroke is about an evil guy, at the top of the industry. I didn't know that. Uh, Al Broderick, I like your stories, brother John. Well, I'm going to get into. I'm, I've got a channel called John Bowden. It's just called John Bowden. If you look up channel John Bowden, there's two videos on there. One with a bunch of uh, uh, skunks coming towards our house in two houses ago. And another one where my son, who's quite young is on a, on a, on a hilltop and there's this big mofo storm coming up. So I've always wanted to do the John Bowden channel just to talk about stuff, life stories. That's what I want to do. Now it's not going to be monetized and I can't stream live because I don't have enough subscribers on that channel. Cause I've not done anything with it. So I'm going to do something with that pretty soon. I've been saying that for years, but I really want to do it. Sin City, James Gang, another bitch and band. Oh, yeah. Uh, Bill Simzik told me this about uh, um, Sin City Jim, the producer of the Eagles, who also produced, of course, James uh, 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 Joe Walsh, said when he was walking in to see the James Gang perform, he heard them before he saw them. This is Bill Simzik, Hotel California, one of these nights. Even he was, he finished producing on the border, uh, uh, the long run, the live album. But he heard the James Gang and his first thought was, wow, this is a big band. Well, James Gang is a trio. So they were so big and then he walks in and there's three guys. And he, he, couldn't, he couldn't believe it. That, that all that sound was coming from three guys. That was Bill Simzik producer of the Eagles first thought about the James gang. I'm going, Whoa. I mean, hell, hell yeah. Right. <clears throat> Michael R. Nope. Midwest rocks. Uh, Chevelle 5150 Squire remained successful after that video. <clears throat> Aldo Nova. I don't know if Aldo Nova will get in. What a phenomenon that was. Although I reached out to him a few years ago. I didn't mean, although I mean, Aldo Nova, a few years ago, I reached out to him and he says, well, he was doing one of those, well, who are you? And he wasn't doing it rude. I just, I didn't mean to say it that way. 
<clears throat> and I said, hey, you got a new album out? We should do an interview. I'm John Bowden. I'm from Rocky Street Music. Our channel does pretty good. I think we had maybe 80,000 subscribers back then. We have 130 now. And I mean, that's usually enough, right? And, and plus, if you watch our videos, it's not like we don't know what we're doing. Um, so I told him who I was. I've been in radio at that point, maybe 35 years or something like that. I'm just retired at 41 years, but he never got back to me and I don't chase people. And it's not about Aldo. Chances are I would have got back to him and he would have given me an interview. Kind of like the Frampton thing. I don't know why we can't get Peter Frampton, but we're a big enough channel to get a Peter Frampton. So Peter, I love you, man. I'm glad you're in the rock and roll of fame. So anyway, I'm, I'm going to continue with Peter Frampton. Because I freaking love Peter Frampton. When Frampton Comes Alive came out, I went back and started buying all of his older albums. You know, when I heard Something's Happening, which is my favorite Peter Frampton uh, song, the first one off Frampton Comes Alive, I remember going, this guy's like, where has this guy been my whole life? And then I started realizing, oh, I have heard him before. <clears throat> I didn't know he was Peter Frampton. So Mark Burchett, best channel on the subject, John. Thank you. I appreciate it. Oh, Violent Films is a massive slight. I, I, yeah, Michael R. I, I don't know if they're going to be on the A-list for Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, though they're heavily influential. <clears throat> uh, James Cook says, uh, yeah, the drinking really affected Joe Walsh's voice. Some of the interviews he did, I, I almost got him uh, a year and a half ago. Uh, Robert LaPointe, do it, John. Build your personal channel. Thank you. Michael R. Nope, Midwest Rocks. Squire, uh, okay, I re read some of this. Thank you. Oh, uh, Pasta Pert, my favorite uh, interview channel. Thank you, I appreciate that. I, I, I uh, Shannon's, I think she is. She should be um, finishing up Richie Henman, who is the original drummer of April Wine right now. I don't do my interviews anymore. I don't do, I do my interviews, but I don't uh, chop them up. I can't stand watching myself. Like, I, I mean, poor Shannon. Sometimes before I'll ask, this is how I'll ask a question sometimes. And I don't know why I'm doing my interviews this way, but Debbie Carroll says, James gang rides again. I'll go. Uh, yeah. But you know, I'm thinking out loud when I'm talking to someone, I have all my questions. Like I do right here. I have a, um, my MacBooks down here. My SLR cameras here. My mic's here. I do my interviews this way, but sometimes I'll go, I'm thinking out loud about oh, what's my next question. Even though my next question is right there. But I like to keep it free for him. And I'll go, well, yeah, um, uh, well, uh, okay, let's go. And that, oh, well, actually, why don't we start? And I'll do that. And Shannon has to go through this <coughs> of going, what the heck? What are you talking about? And and I always told her, I said, no, no, don't listen to all the, the, the precursor stuff. I'll always ask the question one more time, but right at the end, the right way. She says, John, you've been on radio 41 years. How come you're just jumping all over yourself? I'm going, I just do that when I'm in interviewing. Just kind of like two guys talking. Usually, you know, and drives her crazy. I think if I put it on the, on on my channel, it'll drive you crazy. Uh, Mark Burchett, Alvin Lee, oh yeah, uh, Blue Cheer. Oh, you coming up with some good ones here. Uh, Got to mention Blue Cheer, Peter Frampton for sure, James Gang. Again, I will I will tell you before we go. And by the way, thanks for the folks who donated. Uh, most of our donations came through our our Facebook page tonight. But thank you because we're trying to buy a decent microphone. And uh, as most of you know, YouTube, one month you're up here. Whoa, we're doing good. And the next month you're going, what the heck happened to our income? So, uh, if, uh, we're, so we're trying to raise funds to buy a, a Shure SM7B microphone, which is kind of the gold standard for... So, so if anyone wants to donate, you don't have to. Times are hard for some people. Some months, times are hard for us. <clears throat> but there's a, a link in the description of this video and all our videos to a PayPal link. You'd, you can also join our, our uh, Patreon. And after this, I'm going to put five more clips to Patreon. Mary J. Blige in the performer category this year got in. Cher got into the Rock and Roll of Fame. Dave Matthews Band, I well deserve. Foreigner, yay, Foreigner, little Graham McJones. Peter Frampton. Um, heavily influenced. And remember, Frampton went out, you know, before the humble pie and everything and then solo stuff. And 
Tramp comes alive. He went on and David Bowie gave him a chance again when he was kind of down and out and, and, and he kind of got back to it. And Peter Frampton's solo albums, the last few albums, last like freaking seven albums are amazing. Cool and the Gang are in the Rock and Roll of Fame. Uh, they will be. Ozzy Osbourne, second time. Tribe Called Quest. Um, Musical Excellence Award, uh, Jim Buffett. MC5, Dionne Warwick. Norman Whitfield, what a great writer-producer. Alexis Corner, blues man, legend in the in the in the in England. John Mayall, Clapton, you know, went in and played with him, and of course he didn't need. It's John Mayall, man, blues breakers. Big Mama Thornton, and Emmett Ardigan Award, Susan DePass from the industry. <clears throat> Oh, uh, Robert LaPointe, the video and the audio was excellent tonight. Thank you. The The problem is not when I'm streaming. <coughs> I've been on too long. The problem is not when I'm streaming. Is the problem when I'm, I'm doing, I'll do these, let's just say, like tomorrow, uh, uh, we keep putting them off. We put the first part up for Cream. Um, uh, Jack Bruce's son, Malcolm. Malcolm Bruce. We've had him on. He talked about uh, Ginger Baker. Great clip. He says the... The uh, inconsistency, the, the consistency of inconsistency is how he described Ginger Baker. And he knew Ginger, of course. And Ginger's on his new album. So in the next clip, tomorrow, what I do is, I'll from now on, what I do is before I play the clip of the artist I've got on, if it's Cream, tomorrow it's going to be Jack Bruce with his son, Malcolm. But before I put Malcolm on, I'll do a little vignette about Jack Bruce's uh, life. How we're brought up, the Cream stuff, you know, those first three albums are monumental albums. Um, and going into his solo stuff. But I'll produce that, and this microphone's not good for that. For whatever reason, it just doesn't, it's not a very smooth microphone. So that's why. So if anyone wants to help us buy a microphone, there's a link in the description to PayPal. Thank you. Um, uh, again, uh, Violent uh, Femmes, uh, Massive Slight. Cream, what a group. Oh, yeah. when, you know, talk to Mark Farner of Grand Funk many times. Um, Mark calls everyone that interviews him brother. So when I get on, I'm not a religious guy at all. I'm, I'm not religious. <clears throat> People always get mad when I say that. I'm going, that's important for me to say that. I'm not promoting anything, but I agree with if you find a religion that makes you whatever gets you through through the night, you connect to your God and you love it. I believe in a higher power, you know. I just don't do the religious thing. But anyway, Mark Farner calls me Brother John all the time. He knows that. He knows I'm more of a Buddhist kind of dude. <clears throat> but he says, that fresh cream, John. Mark Farner always says, John, that fresh cream. Man, there's... There's, there's nothing like that fresh cream. <laughs> go ahead. You, you go, you go, Mark, you go for it. Okay. I got to go guys. Thank you. Uh, pasta per donated. You bring us joy. Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Thank you. Oh, gin blossoms. James Cook, before we go, I like gin blossoms. I don't think they'll ever get in. I don't know. It's kind of like, you know, pasta per. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, Gin Blossoms, like like Train, who were bigger, for instance. I love Train, you know. And of course, what happened to Train? Drops of Jupiter. You've heard me say this on the channel many times. Train was a, a big Led Zeppelin fan band. Not that they sounded like Led Zeppelin, but they did record an album that was, I think, was it Led Zeppelin 2? I think they redid Led Zeppelin 2. Just to show that they originally were a rock band, and Train was. But then they had a hit with Drops of Jupiter, and uh, they're not crazy, right? They want to make a living. And Train has stood the test of time because of a lot, you know, uh, a lot of songs like like Drops. They'll never have another Drops of Jupiter, which, by the way, um, um, I, I still think gets tons of airplay, you know, like today. But, but Train will never get in the Rock and Roll fame. It's just not going to happen. They've had a lot of hits. But I just just not the type of band that you know. There was too many bands in the '80s that's that uh, I uh, um, that that kind of had that ilk that sounded kind of like Train. And I love Train. Train's one of my favorite bands from that era. 
you know, Mark Monahan, their lead singer, who was in a Hallmark Hall of Fame a little while ago. Um, not a bad actor. His solo album is amazing. Oh my God. It's... Anyway. Okay. See everyone next time. Thanks, Pasta Purr. Ken, I saw that. That is fantastic. Mark Burchett. Raw milk, fresh cream. Yeah. <laughs> Do you feel like we do? Epic live, uh, Michael R. Yes, Grateful Dead. Uh, uh, yep, Fresh Cream, Sin City. Tears for Fears, I think Tears for Fears will get in. Yeah, definitely. I really think Tears for Fears will get in. Elemental, though, uh, Rosa, Roland Orzabal's uh, first solo album without Kurt Smith. <clears throat> to me, that is one of the best Tears for Fears albums. Nothing against Kurt Smith, but that album just shook me. I was going through a breakup at the time. It shook me like a dog! Anyway, thanks guys for being on. I'm getting a little goofy, getting tired. But uh, John Bowden, what? A, where's my thing? Oh, rock history music. Thanks for the folks who donated. Man, we're gonna buy that microphone. Remember, there's a link in the description if you want to make a PayPal donation. I love you guys. I love that you're out there. I love that you care about music. I love that this stuff moves you. I, I, it means something to me. I always feel like I'm at a party and we're talking about stuff. So. Take good care of yourself. Okay, guys? John Bowden, Rocky Street Music, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame.